AMD today announced its RX 6700 XT GPU, following up the 6800 XT, the 6800 non-XT, and the 6900 XT previously. And so we have specs from that announcement, with the pricing, the release date targets, and one other aspect of conversation that's important, which is uh, we had some time to speak with AMD about how it's planning to address the availability issues and how it's planning to deal with the market and its current capacity where they can't possibly provide enough GPUs no matter how good or bad the product is. So we have all of that to talk about today, uh, but we'll start with the specifications for the RX 6700 XT. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is what we've been using for years to manage our own Gamers Nexus store, and we've been incredibly happy with the choice. Squarespace makes e-commerce easy for those interested in starting stores, but it also has powerful tools to build all types of websites. Photo galleries for photographers, resume and portfolio sites, and small business sites are all easily done through Squarespace. Having built a lot of client websites the old way before running GN full-time, we can easily recommend Squarespace as a powerful, fast solution. Go to squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So to get started here, AMD had a public announcement for its 6700 XT. It also did a press pre-briefing. We did the pre-briefing for this one, which means we may have further commentary on the matter once we watch the live stream once it goes up. However, in theory, we should have seen pretty much everything they were going to say at the live event uh, in the pre-briefing. Contrary to popular belief, however, the companies do not give us the live event recording to watch before it goes live. Rather, they give us a separate one-on-one -on -one walkthrough. In this case, it was a walkthrough with uh, Anthony from LTT was on the same call as I was. So let's go through the specs first. This is what everyone cares about. We'll get straight to the point. Andy's new RX 6700 XT video card is using new silicon. So it has a new GPU die. It's a new cut of silicon from the 68, 68 XT, and 6900 cards. And uh, in the renders, for what it's worth, the silicon's rotated a bit diagonally and the carriage is handled a little differently too for the substrate. So we'll look at all that in the teardown of the 6700 XT once we get it. That'll be true for all models, reference or otherwise. The RX 6700 XT's pricing has it just below the RTX 3070. So the 6700 is supposed to be $480. There is no non-XT currently planned. It's just the 6700 XT. So for purposes of this video, when we say 6700, that's the one we're referring to. A future 6700 is a possibility obviously, but not in the current plans. AMD noted explicitly that it wants to focus on uh, sending all of its supply to a couple of SKUs. That way it can support those few SKUs as best it can rather than further diluting it into more SKUs still. The RTX 3070 has a $500 MSRP. Again, we understand that prices are made up and don't matter at this point, but we're still talking in terms of MSRP. The RTX 3060 Ti is a $400 MSRP, and so and these RX 6700 XT lands between them, mostly biased towards the 3070. So uh, AMD's first party benchmarks, which we'll briefly talk about in a little bit here, do show that the company is on average on par with the 3070 or slightly ahead, sometimes slightly behind, but its first party benchmarks are with smart access memory enabled. It did not provide any benchmarks with it enabled and disabled, just enabled. So we are missing a significant part of the story there because NVIDIA didn't have rebar enabled in its testing because it's not, at least at the time these benchmarks were performed, a publicly available technology from NVIDIA. Now as for the GPU specs, the new 6700 XT will run 40 compute units. So it's cut in half from the 6900 XT. The 6700 XT's 40 CU count puts it at 2560 uh, streaming processors which is convenient, but completely unrelated, since AMD is targeting it at 2560 by 1440 gaming. With 40 CUs, it is therefore reduced by 33% from the 6800 non-XT's 60 CU count. The 6800 XT and 6900 XT have the smallest gap between them, but the 6700 XT and 6800 now establish the largest gap in physical hardware capabilities between AMD's current lineup. The 6700 XT didn't have its clocks fully detailed in the pre-briefing, but AMD provided an up to number for whatever that's worth, which isn't a ton, but 24, 24 megahertz for that number. Memory capacity will run 12 gigabyte GDDR6. Power is 230 watts per TGP, and that's down from uh, 250 watts at the previous low. Back to those first party benchmarks. So AMD did provide some first party gaming benchmarks. We try to not show too many slides from first party results in a pre hardware availability announcement, but we'll go through one of them here. Just as a reminder though, this is going to be filtered by AMD. They did to their credit include uh, results that were both favorable and unfavorable to some extent. 
but it is with Sam enabled on theirs and no rebar for NVIDIA, which is a pending technology for NVIDIA, but it gives us part of the picture. AMD is expecting the 6700 XT to roughly equate or outmatch the RTX 3070 on average and the game is shown in its first party results. And that's again with SAM on and not on for NVIDIA. Rebar or SAM gives anywhere from 0% to 16% uplift according to new numbers from AMD. In our own benchmarking, we've seen up to 10%, but it does depend largely game by game. AMD falls behind in some titles like Watch Dogs Legion, but pulls ahead similarly in others like Valhalla. Some of that may be rebar coming into play. As for why rebar is so variable in the uplift it provides, it depends game by game. So a lot of this comes down to game code level optimizations or methods used to build the game. It can be engine level as well, and largely has to do with how the page file is used in those games, whether rebar provides a meaningful uplift or provides nothing. Sometimes you get 0%, and sometimes it can be, from what we understand, negative. And when it is negative, what's happening is NVIDIA or AMD are going through and explicitly disabling the feature and drivers or optimizing it up to 0% or greater, depending on what it is, which is why this isn't just a, a bit that they flip. They do have to do some driver level optimization, both AMD and NVIDIA. As for ray tracing, no numbers were shown. Uh, this happened last time too. AMD got pretty beat up in the ray tracing benchmarks for dollar for dollar comparisons between the closest NVIDIA competing cards from this generation especially. So it's not a surprise that the company continues to minimize its focus on ray tracing numbers. Uh, ahead of a launch. It's going to keep happening. This is an architectural level thing uh, and to some extent a product level thing, but the stack has already been defined, so we're not really going to see a change anytime soon on this. So ray tracing, not going to be a focus, but rasterization performance remains the key point for AMD. Of course, AMD is able to do ray tracing now. It is a native feature and it's a hardware level feature, so you do get it, but it's not as strong comparatively to NVIDIA, uh, hence not seeing it in the first party benchmarks. Now, that might change in the announcement AMD does. And if, if there is information there, we'll do a follow-up on it. But for now, that's what we have. Let's move on to AMD's extra features. So it's got Fidelity FX, things like anti-lag and Radeon Boost. And these have gotten some additional push for this launch uh, following the previous pushes that they've gotten. One of the key features, though, is that AMD is adding smart access memory support for Ryzen 3000 CPUs whereas previously it was exclusively Ryzen 5000 CPUs with the 6000 series GPUs. And then Intel and its partners have started adding rebar support as well, including for with NVIDIA GPUs. So uh, smart access memory will apply to all 6000 series GPUs going backwards, not just the 6700 XT and the 6700 XT, of course. And they also reemphasized Fidelity FX, specifically calling attention to upfits for its anti-lag and Radeon Boost software solutions. Variable rate shading was up for discussion as well, but we have limited information on this time. One interesting point, though, was that Radeon Boost will see a bigger uplift anywhere there's motion, thanks to motion adaptive VRS, or variable rate shading. This makes it tough to benchmark, because there does need to be some level of motion, and that can be difficult to recreate. But it's a feature that may prove useful. What people actually care about is super resolution, which we talked about back when the RX 6000 series first launched. This is AMD's semi, but not quite equivalent to DLSS. But we were told early on with the 6000 launch originally not to directly equate DLSS to super resolution because they do things a little bit differently. To what extent they do things differently, we're waiting to be told. AMD had some commentary on super resolution, but uh, if you've been waiting for AMD to push some form of DLSS counterpart, how, how much of a counterpart it is directly to be determined, but uh, if you're waiting for it, you're going to be waiting a little bit longer because they're not ready yet. AMD said it, quote, will say more closer to the time which it's available and said, quote, our absolute target with super resolution is the same as the rest of Fidelity FX. We don't want it to be limited on our DNA too. And more elaboration there needed on specifically what they mean, if they mean going backwards or not. AMD has no current announcements for super resolution, in other words, but it is working on it. AMD reiterated that its current focus is the competitive experience, particularly with rasterization performance at 1440p and with high refresh displays. AMD used its platform to talk about growth rate and resolutions. This isn't the market share of each resolution, so be careful not to fall into that misconception, but rather it's the growth of each standard year over year between quarter three 2019 and quarter three 2020. The growth was 44% for 1440p, 41% for 4K, with 1080p slowing but still technically growing. 
AMD also highlighted that specifically 1440p saw a boost in growth to 98% for refresh rates higher than 100 hertz. That's why 1440p is outpacing 4K as well. There seems to be more interest in high refresh now than previously. AMD took this opportunity to, as expected, market its memory capacity, especially as related to higher resolution. It said that, quote, future-proofing is what we want to convey with this regarding the memory capacity and the PCIe bandwidth afforded by Gen 4. Now on to the next topic, it's about availability, and this is a tough one for AMD to talk about. So Anthony of LTT and I were on the same call. We took some time to talk with AMD about availability and provided mostly the same perspective. Uh, Anthony is from a channel that's larger. So the perspective from both of us was, we're not going to be able to talk about any GPU without talking about availability, supply, and the current inability of supply to meet the overwhelming demand. And AMD is aware of this problem as well. It's certainly seen the comments, uh, but we made sure that AMD was aware of, of those comments. And AMD and its representatives are in a tough spot. Neither AMD nor NVIDIA want to give many details on quantity shipped. We don't blame them. That's kind of standard practice. Normally, you don't really disclose it other than maybe in earnings calls with investors, which are public, but, uh, but it's not often you can get a pure number for, for units. So we were able to get them into somewhat relative terms to at least give everyone an idea of what's going on so we could talk about quantity or availability in some capacity. First, AMD is doing a number of things to try and address the supply constraints it's facing right now. And uh, it's also got some other ideas we'll talk about in a moment, provide our perspective on. First up, AMD is shipping all of the products at once. Board partners will not be restricted to a later launch date. AMD showed this in one of its slides in the PDF that it sent us. Both AMD reference and partner boards will be available on the same day. And that's March 18th. The reviews go up one day prior. So this is another good thing. In a market where you have to buy without thinking in order to even get a card, allowing reviews to be posted a day in advance gives people time to decide whether or not they want the card. We think this is a good move in this market, and it's one that obviously benefits reviewers, but also benefits consumers, because you don't have to just sprint into buying something completely blind without knowing what it's going to provide you. Next up, AMD says that system integrators and OEMs will also launch systems on the same day as AMD's reference card, and it says that this is counter to crypto mining, since miners are far less likely to buy full systems than single GPUs. Similarly, AMD said it's specifically trying to boost availability of boards to physical retail locations. AMD thinks, and we mostly agree, that there's a better chance a gamer gets a card at a physical retailer than a miner who's competing with everyone online might. Separately, AMD will be releasing inventory on AMD.com weekly for the RX 6700 XC reference boards. They did refer to this as drops, which it's a little hype beasty for me to use that phrase for a video card restock, but that's, that's the market we're in now. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Finally, AMD is not going to be doing anything to mitigate the hash rates of the 6700 XTs, uh, and it stated that it thinks that these limitations would just be bypassed anyway. Credit to Anthony from LTT for asking this specific question. Uh, and AMD suggested that hard fusing would, be need, would need to be done in order to really stop anyone from mining on the cards. Now, AMD has a point here, for sure. Uh, there is a possibility that driver and firmware level blocks at some point can be overcome. Now, whether that's because the, the mining software itself is modified, sort of like a, a malware, anti-malware arms race, or because the driver is hacked, and that code is modified or removed. It's one way or the other, it's possible that uh, any measures Andy puts in place could be overcome by someone who has enough financial desire to overcome them. But one point that we don't agree with here is, is just leaving the door open. So while AMD has a point, that point is similar to saying, I'm not going to put a lock on the door to my house or my car because someone could just bypass it anyway. The point isn't really that someone can bypass it. The point is that you are slowing them down or maybe they break into that house instead. So there is some uh, mitigation tactics being left on the table here that AMD could be pursuing. Now, AMD's argument was, look, we're trying to save all of our optimization resources for other stuff, for gaming. 
And that's a good argument, and it's hard for us to really argue with it because AMD has fewer resources than NVIDIA. So maybe it's not as simple as just having someone spend a, a little while adding in driver level and firmware level locks to certain types of applications. So sure, it could be bypassed, but as lock picking lawyer has shown us, any lock can be bypassed. That doesn't, however, mean that you shouldn't put a lock on your valuables because maybe it'll be enough to slow the immediate sell through rate of the cards. And again, maybe it doesn't matter in this market. No one knows anymore. Uh, so we asked AMD if it could openly address this situation and requested some kind of statement or quote. The company did provide Gamers Nexus and Linus Tech Tips on the same call with the following statement. AMD said, quote, we totally get the frustration from gamers. With everything going on, it's a struggle in terms of the overall supply. What we're trying to do is everything we can to get it into gamers' hands. Having partners available at the same time is one of those things. We're also working with the retail partners to get more cards physically to the retailers so gamers can get it directly from them so that it's less likely to get scalped out. Working with e-tailers in terms of bot prevention, limiting the number of orders, all that stuff we did with the 6800, we're still doing. AMD said it cannot explicitly comment on the number of units that it's selling. At this point, they said, I don't have a particular number I can share. And they said, a couple of things I can say are, one, we're going to make sure that AMD.com reference cards will be available day one at SCP. 6700 and 6800 families are different families of products. So by default, you would expect that based on the price point, higher demand, and higher volume sell-through, we would have appropriately planned for it. And now with that last sentence there, this wasn't a scripted reply. This They had clearly provided off the top here. So uh, to just make sure everything's clear, they're basically saying they're going to have more 6700 XTs at launch relative to the 6800, the 68 XT, the 69 XT. So that's a good thing. Although like Andy says clearly in the statement, demand is going to be higher for a cheaper cart. Uh, especially right now. So other than that, AMD couldn't provide much additional information. It did tell us that the Navi 21 products, and this is something Lisa Sue said in an investor call recently, have shipped more compared to any previous Radeon video card, including the ATI days from what we understand, uh, above the $549 price point specifically. To be fair here, to split hairs a little bit, prices have increased over the years. There are more cards over $549 than previously. So that does help that number. But the point that they're trying to make is, look, we're shipping stuff. It's just, it's not enough of it. And that's what NVIDIA has been saying too. So that's it for the news announcement. We will have a review of this card. Uh, we understand that not everybody in the audience will be able to get it day one. That's been true always. It just feels like it's more true now because maybe it's affecting more people. But we're still going to review it day one. It will still be useful to you because day one for the review is one day before launch. So on the very least, you'll be able to look at the review and figure out if you care enough to wake up early on March 18th and try to buy the card. And uh, if, you, if you do care enough and you can't get the card, the review will remain valid. Those relative comparisons, uh, one card to the next, pretty much stay the same forever. There's a little bit of fluctuation, more so game by game than uh, aggregate. And so once you learn where the card is and if you want it and if it makes sense at the price, all the stuff we'll say in the review, you can determine if at a later point, when it's more readily available, you want to buy it. Uh, you'll already have the information. We're putting it out there early so that you'll have it. So hopefully that is helpful to a lot of people at some point, if not immediately. But that's it for this one. Thank you for watching as always. If you'd like to buy something that is in stock, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net and pick up our teardown toolkits for maintenance and teardowns, especially of GPUs. Or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus for some extra footage and behind the scenes stuff. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.